Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I can throw as many scientific facts at them, but if I never address their fears, then I'll never get them to agree. That is a guy in Idaho who is a nurse practitioner. Brad Bickford's his name. And no, it, it doesn't matter what you throw at people anymore. We've talked about this ad nauseum, but we are no longer interested in the truth. We're interested in our truth. It used to be is your truth, my truth, the truth. Right? Now it is only whatever you feel it is. The truth. To yourself. Based on your beliefs. Based on whatever BS that is flying through your head at that time. And all of us go through it. I've gone through it. Guilty as charged, kids. Who hasn't? But facts no longer matter. Right? It, it, it no longer is mad. Whether it's, you know, MSNBC and MSN going after, you know, Joe Rogan and, and, and you know, Joe was joking about it yesterday. His, I should, you know, they were, he had Tom Segura on. He's like, maybe I should sue. <laughs> right? Because they were talking about, you know, all that stuff they, 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 you know, they said about it. Right? That they kind of like, they, they, and it's funny, they didn't even retract it until like the third or fourth time they tried to set the record straight about something. And finally, like, ah, all right, we lied. We only care about whatever truth that we think we have going on that matters to us nowadays in politics. What have I said over the last several months? We're not interested in solutions. We're interested in winning arguments for ourselves. We're not interested in a solution, not interested in, in, in solving something. You always joke about it. I say, you guys hear me say it all the time. Would you rather be right or would you rather be rich? And people say, well, that's, I'd rather be right. Well, it's not about if you're rich or wrong. What it is is so many people want to be right that they'll sacrifice in their the, – the, they will – again, it's not about whether or not you're, you're right. It's did I win an argument? A, a, am I right now at this moment in time? Did I win an argument? And who are you winning an argument for? People on the Internet? Yeah. More often than not, that's what it's about. It's about winning an argument on the internet. And when it comes to something like the vaccine and the battles I see out there, let's just, it's so funny. People are like, facts matter. Okay, well, let's look at the facts. Of all the people in the hospital, how many of them are vaccinated people comparatively to the unvaccinated? Just curious. We need to figure out some way to, to speak to these people on a larger scale because our vaccine rates in Idaho are so low that we're never going to achieve any type of normalcy with the way things are going no probably not not for a while not for a while and it is frustrating you know i i came back yesterday and after i took you know several days off which is was totally needed i'll be completely honest with you and i was talking to my my uncle last night and i just said i gotta be honest man i said i get back and i'm not i love what i do i don't love what this medium brings out at times now i'm blessed because a majority of you and i say a vast majority of people listening are smart people and you guys are independent thinkers and i don't want you to uh i don't want you to take my word for it i want you to go look stuff up right and if i'm wrong tell me about it but we're we're living in a time of affirmation not information we're living in a time where people are more interested in 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 winning arguments than finding solutions and that is not a good place to be when you've got something that quite frankly is is putting a crimp in our style if you will so you have to weigh the risks of the vaccine to the risk of the virus and when you do that it's not even close covid causes blood clots it causes heart attacks and strokes it causes scarring of your lungs that's a long-term consequence people don't think that way it goes back to be would you rather be right or would you rather be rich they care about this moment this time they're not worried about tomorrow and that's a frustrating thing and yesterday i you know it it, it was again i last week it was so funny. Last week I was joking because I have a like one of those 
those boops or zoops, and I have all these things that, you know, the Fitbits and the whole nine yards. And my resting heart rate, rate last week was right around 61. And, like, now it's, well, it's it's back over 65. Because I'm having to deal with stuff that last week I didn't have to. Because people just want to argue. They just want to argue. It's all they care about. They just want to argue. And both sides do it. Both sides do it. You know, there's a there's a new word out there, and this is so true. So I, I was reading this last night, and I started laughing because I'm like, oh, my God, that is so spot on. That is so spot on. So it's called Vaxenfreud. And you're like, what the hell is Vaxenfreud? So Schadenfreud, it's a German word. Essentially, it is... People, bad things that happen to people, you, you, you take joy in that, right? You laugh at that. Well, vaccine Freud is the new thing. It's essentially you take joy in people who aren't vaccinated who get really sick. And the same thing goes in the other way where people who aren't vaccinated and they catch this thing and it's nothing They take joy in saying you're worried about nothing and stuff. But there is a certain sense of of piousness and and virtue signaling when it comes to this damn thing that we shouldn't be talking about in the way that we do. But it goes back to what I continue to say. We're not interested in a solution. We are interested in winning an argument. Winning an argument is not finding a solution out of this damn thing. It's crazy. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Hope you guys are doing well. So, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but uh, Afghanistan's got a new government. They're all members of the Taliban. No way, Martha. Are you, Martha, what? They're all members of the Taliban. No way. All of them? And, And it certainly does not include any women. No way. So wait, they're all members of who and, and, and no what? They're all members of the Taliban, and it certainly does not include any women. Oh, my Lord. But it does include people with ties to terrorism. No. So wait a minute. They're all part of the Taliban? There are no women? And there are people that are tied to terrorist organizations? But they, and they told Trump. And then they promised, and then the, oh, oh, are you kidding me? This is my disappointment face. Including the new minister of the interior, who has a $5 million FBI price tag on his head for his affiliation with terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda. Ah, I cannot believe that. Oh, who would have thought? (laughs) A little while ago. I get like those, you know, the breaking news things come on. And so the Taliban, uh, this thing, you know, flashes across about what you can't do now. Right. Like, what can't you do? Uh, Well, ladies, uh, basically anything you've done before, you can't do now. In their first official statement, the newly appointed leaders say they will take steps to protect human rights. But they have already disbanded the Ministry of Women's Affairs, the lead agency for promoting women's rights. No. Yeah. So everything's going to be about Sharia law. Uh, Women will no longer allowed to basically have any kind of rights whatsoever. They'll be chattel. You know, there'll be property, uh, sports, anything, learning, get your learn on, sports, all that stuff going away. Going away. Who would have thunk? Everybody would have thunk. Everybody would have known. Everybody should have seen this coming. So this is not something that we should be surprised about. But I love the, like, the reporting. Like, I can't believe they are not doing that. I thought they'd be good. No, they're not going to be good. In their mind, they're good, right? In our mind, we look over there because we look around and, and you know, Trump gets voted in and you've got the uh, people who wear the, 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 the kitty cat hats, if you will, and there's hundreds of thousands of them and they descend on D.C. and they talk about the fact they don't have rights and it's a, they feel like it's the maiden, was it, the handmaid's tale and, and all of this stuff. And then we step back for a second and we're just like, 
No. <laughs> not, not really. Not really. They're going back in. You know, like you, you'll talk to some people and they'll be like, you just want us in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant. And like, nobody's, you know, that nobody's ever said, wait, what? They don't even want you in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant. They want you covered up, never leaving the house, never getting your learn on, never doing anything fun. <laughs> it is pretty amazing. And we live in a modern world. That is not as modern as we think. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Hope all is well for you. Raycon, best here, buds around. I love my Raycons. Wear them every day. In fact, I've got a uh, big coaching session later. I'm doing with one of the, uh, uh, and, and a guy I'm working with who helps me in the, the promo world. Because uh, I do promos and stuff for stations and whatnot. And uh, he... Uh, I have my Raycons on. He always has, what are, I said, oh, my Raycons are amazing, dude. I love them. I love, because you can't see them. There's no wires. There's no stems. Uh, I haven't plugged my Raycons in for days because my charging case always keeps them charged. It is incredible how amazing these are. So, 60, you know, you get a 45-day happiness guarantee. You'll know 60 seconds into it why these things are the best earbuds around. From the feel and fit inside of your ear to the sound quality and design and you're going to love these things. Right now, they start under 70 bucks, And you can save even more. And this is what I want you to go to. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Save an extra 15%. Check out all the amazing selections of, of incredible earbuds they have. But you're going to love these everyday use earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. If you filled up, you know gas prices are on the rise. The Energy Department says a gallon of regular is up four cents a gallon last week to a national average of three dollars and seventeen cents. The highest prices are in California at nearly four dollars a gallon, and the lowest are along the Gulf Coast, just over two dollars and eighty cents, even in the wake of Hurricane Ida. Yep, I have filled up. Uh, this time last year, I think I was paying, gosh, I don't know, like two thirty. Uh, I paid three thirty the other day. It was like three forty when I get off the freeway here. It's it's crazy still. And once again, those are little things that go a long way when people are looking at what affects them. Inflation, right, is is a huge kick in the grundle. So you look out there and you're like, mm, this is you know stuff is costing more. I'm getting less of it takes a bigger bite out of your paycheck and that all starts to add up and we go back and i'll always say this it's the economy stupid people are fat dumb and happy they're they'll let you get away with a lot of stuff they will but if things go south you pay the price for it right if they're not fat dumb and happy if they're broke (laughs) hungry they're angry, and they'll look for a change. And that's the, you know, I always go back to, I tell everybody, you, you, you look at China, for instance, right? So China is one of those countries that uses state-sponsored capitalism to fund their communism. And that sounds weird, right? Capitalism, com- but they do. Because they realized we can't end up like the Soviet Union. First of all, we can't, we're never going to be able to feed ourselves uh, if we don't open up trade to the world. We're going to eventually fall apart, and if we don't give people some freedoms to take their mind off the fact that we're taking away other freedoms, it's going to implode on us. And that's what they did. Let's be real. If 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 you Tiananmen Square is a perfect example. They you go back and you look at Tiananmen Square. And you look at that and you think to yourself what took place after that? It was the rise of their state-sponsored capitalism, if you will. 
a pushing forward of, of giving people certain freedoms. With those freedoms came responsibilities. Responsibilities take your mind off all of the other stuff. And I don't think people realize that. But they're also in a pickle. And China is in a pickle because China needs money to sustain their world, just like the rest of us do. But they've given people the opportunity to get freedoms. So if you took away their money and they had no freedoms is when you have the anger. Here we do it differently. If money disappears, if things become more expensive, if moves that you do politically cost people in their pocketbook, instead of rising up, we go vote. And the midterms next year are going to be very interesting. That three and a half trillion dollars that they want to, you know, reconciliation backdoor through, it's going to touch everybody and not in a positive way. Oh, it all sounds good, but it's three and a half trillion dollars. To say that only one tenth of one percent is going to cover all of that is insane. It will affect everybody. So, what happens at that point? When you overreach, a lot of times we as voters do what? We slap it back down. Mm-mm. We got, we got to balance this thing out. We're going to have to take some of this and and give this power over here because we we thought you could be trusted with it, but obviously you can't. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. America's long nightmare. Is it finally over? We will discuss that Texas, man, Texas is just going and going and doing their thing. I don't care what anybody else thinks. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. America's long nightmare. It's, it's, it's coming to an end. Britney's father, Jamie Spears, filing a petition through his attorney to formally ask the court to end the conservatorship. The filing, reviewed by ABC News, states she wants to live her life as she chooses, adding that he believes Brittany is entitled to have this court now seriously consider whether this conservatorship is no longer required. Oh, thank, thank goodness. It's, it's coming, to, it's coming, it's coming to an end. Britney Spears' lawyer calling it vindication for Britney. Her dad, Jamie Spears, filing to end the conservatorship, saying if she believes that she can handle her own life, if she believes. He believes that she should get that chance. Now, it doesn't mean it's over. Wait, what? But he's... No, 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 no. The courts will decide if it's over. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The courts will decide. Now, I don't... I don't know if they'll decide that she should. What if she doesn't? What if they say, you know what? No. <laughs> you know what dad said last week? Uh, and it has been quietly echoed by a few other people uh, within the, the industry. That and, and you don't want to be seen as this guy or gal that's like, oh, you're a horrible person because you think that she can't take care of herself. And, and, and why this is important is because many of us over the next, some of you may be going through it now, some of you may be going through it in the, in the, in the, in the future. You're going to be in a situation where you're fighting with family and you're fighting with, and you're getting advice from 50 people because grandma or grandpa or your, your aunt or your, your father or mother or somebody like, you're having to take essentially control of everything because they can no longer do it. 
they can no longer do it. They can't function in a way that they can control their own lives. And she feels that she's ready to go. Okay. Well, she'll have the chance to go to court and, and you know. <laughs> but several people have said, and it's been a very, you know, unpopular thing. And have echoed what her father said is, I don't think you guys realize what goes on behind the doors. No, no, nobody does. Because we don't live in a world, we're very superficial. We don't care about what goes on for real. We care about, do we look good doing something or supporting something? Does it look good? Does this, this, this thing that I'm doing, does it look good to you? That's what I care about. I don't care about whether or not I believe it or whether or not it's true. I care about, do the rest of you think I'm a good person for whatever this is? We'll find out. In the coming days, weeks, and months. You know, somebody asked me yesterday, well, she's a grown woman, and uh, shouldn't she handle her own affairs? And I said, let me ask you this. So, uh, if your child wasn't capable, for whatever reason, maybe it was mental illness, maybe it was severe drugs uh, that caused mental illness, and there were leeches trying to get at what they had, and they had some fair means. As a as a as a family member, as a a father, a, a daughter, a, a you know, a, you know, whatever it is, wouldn't you feel that you should have some sort of responsibility to that? I mean, I that to me, you know. And I look at my kids, and I think to myself, you know, uh, what if I knew that maybe they weren't totally fully capable and people were more sharks and leeches than anything else? They were trying to get at something they had. Wouldn't you want to be there? And 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 there's a difference. I'm not talking about if you're an idiot, Right. <laughs> Right? Like your kid has tons of money and they're a pro athlete or they're a star or they've and they, and they want to go to Vegas and party it away. But they're not insane. Right. They're, they're, they're not they're not they're not uh, there's none of those things. Then that's that's one thing. You know, they want to invest their money in in, you know, whatever. That's let, let them that that's one thing. If they're not capable of making real rational decisions, that is a separate thing. And I think that's what a lot of this is about. It goes on with grandma and grandpa, right? And everybody's like, ah, oh, I don't want to. I remember when my my great-grandmother, uh, when she came to live with us, and we had to you know, take over all of her stuff. But it, that, the, one of the hardest conversations, wasn't even living. You know what it was? It was you can't drive anymore. That was tough. Little things like that, but you know, okay, uh, you're not capable of this. You're you're a danger to yourself and to others. Oh yeah. And many of you who have dealt with that know how hard that is. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, your Instagram. So. Texas doing Texas things. We must have trust and confidence in our elections. But in Texas and every other state, there has been no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Still, the new law bans drive through voting and 24 hour polling locations, which have increased turnout among minorities. It prevents election officials from sending mail in ballot applications to voters who haven't formally requested them. This comes just one week after Texas enacted the most sweeping abortion law in the nation. Okay, so let's break these two things down. First, Texas and voting rights. We're still, by the way, just to let you guys know, out here in Arizona, we're still going through the audit part D, then part trois, and then part nah. I don't even know what portion we're on. And they finished several weeks ago. There's still nothing else out there as far as what took place and... You know, the ninjas are, well, two weeks ago they were supposed to deliver something. Then they got the coronavirus. 
Oh, no way. Yeah, and apparently one of them, which ninja, the 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 head ninja apparently, the master. He was uh uh apparently very sick. So I don't even know what's going on at this point. It's very quiet. But changing laws. Well, red states are changing certain things. They feel they've got the opportunity to do it. Do I ag- agree with all of it? No. Uh, the drive through thing I always thought was weird, but, you know, like, what do you mean drive through? <laughs> but I lived there. So, uh, dropping a ballot off is. They make it sound like you just roll up to a window. <laughs> so you get to take an order like you're at, you know, this isn't Sonic. Somebody's, nobody's coming out in roller skates. Uh, that to me, I've never had a problem with ID. I, 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 I you got to use your ID for everything. So I've never had a problem with, with voting, voter ID. I know I don't find it. First of all, I find it demeaning when you essentially tell, you know, black people, and that's really what we're talking. We're talking about people of color, right? In particular, it's, they, they turn into a black, white thing, but the reality is, is black people have ID. Of course they do. Why Why wouldn't they? Stop making them a victim. Some of the stuff, I sit there and I go, you're, you're afraid in some areas. You're afraid. Beat them on your merits of what's best for the country, what's best for your district, what's best for your states. Beat them there. Restricting certain things isn't so much a restriction. There's a certain, certain, I understand there's a certain protection that comes with some of these. And some of these things I, I think are overreaching and, and, and ridiculous. But blue states do the exact opposite. They're, they're, they'll do anything. We'll come to your house. Do you want us to pick you up? So that's the battle that goes on here. So from there, then you've got, of course, the abortion battle. Oh, Texas. It doesn't require that at all because, uh, obviously, uh, it provides uh, at least six weeks uh, for a person uh, to be able to uh, get an abortion. That right there is Governor Abbott, right? Right? So he comes out and they're talking about rape, right? Because somebody brings it up. Was it Donna Brazil? It's like, well, what about if somebody's raped? And you're like, is that, how many is that? Just curious. Like, is that every rape? I mean, I mean, is that every pregnancy is a rape? Well, no. Uh, okay, so, 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 what are we talking about here? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. And no, rape is awful and vile. Then he comes out and he says this. Let's make something very clear. Rape is a crime, and Texas will work tirelessly to make sure that we eliminate all rapists from the streets of texas that's good and then people like oh i'm like wait so you're pro-rape so you can be pro-choice well no that's not that's no you're not going to get rid of all rapists we know that but this is the kind of we're fighting over little things once again we're not trying to solve a problem and the first thing we have to do is well, how many, why is there so many unwanted pregnancies? So you, you can make it to a clinic to terminate a pregnancy, but you can't make it there to get the pill, the morning after pill, condoms, uh, you know, all that's, I always found that to be, that's part of the responsibility thing. I mean, that's what you should, the, realistically, what you should call it is it's not abortion. It's the elimination of a responsibility. Oh, Chad. And I, you guys listen to me, you guys know, I think everybody should have a choice, right? Everybody should have a choice. Everybody should have a voice. I got zero problems with that. But you believe in God? I do. I do. And and I believe in God. And I also believe that to me, and this is, again, I'm not, I'm pushing my morals on you. Your morals, my morals, everybody's got their own thing that, that, you know, you, you'll have to answer for that one day. And it is, it's frustrating because we turn it into a political battlefield that the reality is, is rather than find a solution, you're not going to make everybody happy because we live in a world now where it's all or nothing. People will be satisfied having zero as long as the other people also got zero. They'll, they'll be happy if the car never moves. As long as the people inside the car also don't go somewhere. 
And you're like, that is a dumb, wait, what? Yeah. And with it comes the insanity of, you know, we're not going to do business with Texas anymore, and we're going to stay away from Texas, and we're going to sue them, and we're going to do, and you just sit there, and, you know, you're like, that's the 10th largest economy on the planet. You're not not going to do it. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Oh, this is what we think. Once again, can have conversations. You can have a differing of opinions. And so what we should have. The beauty of our state system, the way it's set up is, if you don't like it, you have other choices. <laughs> or you just can't pick up and move. No, but you can't maybe not do it today, but you may be able to do it in six months. You may be able to do it in a year if it's that important to you. People are moving from California to New York. Why? They're moving to Texas. Why are that? Because Texas, the reality is, is they like all the things that Texas has. They just hate the politics. Well, a lot of the stuff that Texas has is because of the politics. And so what ends up happening? You're going to go there and screw it up? <laughs> it's possible. It's frustrating. Once again, can't have a differing of opinion in today's world. Because if you do that, people get mad at you. Can't have a conversation, can't have a vigorous, honest debate, because rather than try to beat people with, if you will, facts, figures, and 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 reality, we're too busy trying to virtue signal, because we think somehow that's going to move the ball forward, or or try to morally signal that morally you're better than other people, and again, doesn't, to me, I just, I care about the facts. That's it. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter Tweet and text, rough greens. Give it to my dog every single day. Uh, yesterday, it was hilarious. Seeing my friend here who started giving her dog rough greens about two weeks ago, and she was telling me just how much better and happier he is. And he had allergies really bad to the point where he'd get those hot spots and he'd lick himself and he, his fur was, she goes, in days, it was like he, all of it had, basically gone away and rough greens is a supplement it goes on top of your dog's food it's got vitamins minerals vegetables probiotics it brings your dog's food to life but that's one big portion of it my dog doodle i talk about him all the time not only has it helped his hip pain and his digestive system but one thing it's done is his fur he just looked like he got hit by lighting his fur is in his coat is amazing try rough greens right now you don't even have to buy it they're going to send you a bag for free all you have to do all you have to do is pay for shipping ruffgreens.com slash chad ruffgreens.com slash chad you get a bag for free you cover the cost of shipping or call 833 my dog 77 833 my dog 77 rough greens makes any pet food better chad benson show If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. Doogie Hauser is now Doogie Kamealoha. Remember Doogie Hauser? That show from the 90s? The teen doctor show that made Neil Patrick Harris a star rebooted his role now a teen girl. And not just a girl, a mixed race girl from Hawaii. Courtney King created the reboot, basing it on her family. I was born in Hawaii. My dad's Korean. My mom's an Irish Catholic girl from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. But the original wasn't a touchstone for 17-year-old star Peyton Elizabeth Lee. I mean, I feel like I'd probably heard of it in some, like, parent reference. <laughs> But I was not very familiar with the show, no. Doogie Kamealoha, MD, is out today on Disney+. Plus. Oh, my God. And it's mixed race, and that's really all that matters. You know, uh, and that's cool. I mean, like, I got, uh, yesterday I was talking to, to my uncle about this. Over the weekend, he went and saw it. I think I'm going to either go see it tonight or tomorrow, which is the uh, uh, the new Ten Rings Marvel movie. Or, and one of the, he said, man, it was a lot of fun. It was great. And I was like, oh, yeah. But we were talking about it, and... Like, there was an article yesterday that's like, now that this has succeeded, uh, there's no reason for Marvel not to be more diverse. I'm like, okay. Here's what people care about now. Is it entertaining? Is it entertaining? That's all 
that you should care about. If you're if you're doing something, right? If you're if you're if you're making a hamburger, and you're like, I gotta have diverse people working for me, and you go and hire a bunch of people, and it's awful, and the hamburger they make is nasty, and the food and all of the stuff is gross. Nobody cares about how diverse it is. Nobody does. It's the same thing. If the movie you're making for entertainment purposes has zero to do with entertainment and all to do with what your writing staff looks like, who they worship, who they love, what they identify as, and it's not entertaining, it doesn't matter. The reason the Marvel movie worked and did well was because it was entertaining. Not because it was diverse. Oh. No, that can't be true. Yeah, it can be. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show's your Twitter. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The U.S. is seeing nearly four times the number of infections and double the number of COVID hospitalizations compared to one year ago when there was no vaccine. ICUs in several states are overwhelmed with unvaccinated patients. In Idaho, which has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country, hospitals are beginning to ration care. The state's health department calling it a last resort, adding it means we've exhausted our resources to the point that our health care systems are unable to provide the treatment and care we expect. And that's so much of what this is about, by the way, right? When it comes to this it's not overwhelming our system at once like if if we if we if we were to able able to say all right you know what 800 of you could be sick at one time and then when you're better we can move another 800 in here but you guys got to be that that's it's it's about overwhelming the system and that's what the delta is doing is it it's easier to catch the net's bigger you guys always hear me talk about that net's bigger and that's big what's it even mean chad uh the net, and so you go out fishing and you have a net, and the net, this net is, you know, it's 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 a ten by ten net, and that was the original coronavirus. This one's, uh, hundred by hundred, meaning you're going to catch a lot more. The net's much bigger. That's kind of what this is, overwhelming the system. But now we know when it comes to things like booster shots, it's the big debate right now: should you or shouldn't you? Is the science clear? Depends on who you're talking to. How clear is it? Again, depends on who you're talking to. Some people want to see some more data on it, scientists. Others are like, yeah, it can't hurt. And let's let's remember, we're trying to change. This is not a vaccine. This is a shot, right? This is just like a a, a flu shot, of which I'm a, this is just me here speaking out loud, spitballing, if you will. That sometime in the next six months to a year, they're going to come up with one that's effective in a way where you might get it once a year, kind of like the flu shot. The flu is not a vaccine. The flu, there's no flu vaccine that call, but it's not really a vaccine because you could still catch the flu. And that's kind of what this is. That is. I think the science on this really is becoming clear. Uh, vulnerable people, older people, frail people, people with chronic diseases, they should undoubtedly be getting that third shot. Um, the question around young, healthy people getting a third shot, I think that part, at least in my mind, is a bit more open. Um, we'll see where the FDA and CDC land on this. As yeah, well. well, and I think that's a big thing. Where will they land on this? And here's the other thing. And this is something, uh, because if you guys listen to the show regularly, again, God bless you, uh, I've had it and i've had moderna i've had both my shots and this is what they're saying having prior infection to covid is 
incredibly valuable in terms of Delta. It's actually the combination that we're finding is vaccination plus prior infection does show that you are, you know, essentially bulletproof. Yeah. And people who had, so if you've had the vaccine only, the chances of you having a breakthrough is greater than if you've caught it and you only have natural antibodies. But if you had both, they're saying it's pretty much kind of bulletproof. Oh, yeah. Now, today, uh, the fearless leader is going to, I, I, he's going to speak. I'm not quite sure if they want him to, but I don't think they'll have a choice at this point. He's going to get out there and speak, uh, and he is going to do, I think, uh, the well, I, he's going to urge companies in particular to really help with the push when it comes to getting people vaccinated. The White House says tomorrow President Biden will unveil a new six-pronged strategy to fight the Delta variant of the coronavirus and to boost vaccinations. He's expected to urge more companies to impose vaccine mandates. Mm. That's, that's kind of what he wants, you know, because he knows he can't really do it it's not going to happen he knows it's politically it's it's not a good thing uh and so he's going to do everything he can to try to get people to to you know to if you will hey i can't really do it i mean i could but who's going to listen people are going to scream states rights and i have individual this and you know and and, and so politically it may be not you know uh, good and and at the end of the day that's kind of what it's really all about uh so if I can get companies to do it and to put people, you know, in a position to have to choose, well, then, uh, you know, that might really speed this thing up. The only way for us to protect ourselves, our community, our healthcare system, and our country is to get vaccinated. And I think the COVID vaccine should be one of those mandates. A lot of people feel that way. You know, yesterday, we'll go back to Mara Gay. You guys remember we were talking about Mara Gay. Mara Gay said this. Uh, a majority of Americans uh, do actually fear this virus. They don't. They don't. It's, again, it's not about fear. It's about respect. But she went on to say, uh, to talk about how essentially, you know, we're going to have to treat people who are unvaccinated differently. And understand the science. They respect it. They've taken steps to protect themselves and their families. Which is what you should do. You take the steps in your life to do what's right for you and your family. If you feel you need to be vaccinated, then you do that. If you feel that you're okay, but you know what? My my mom is, is you know, she's she's got issues, got comorbidities. Uh, you know, her, her immune system is, is compromised. So maybe... Uh, I should make sure she gets it. My wife, my husband, uh, what are the kids? Or, you know, the kids can't get it yet, but we need to, even though I wouldn't normally because we we can't catch this thing because our kid is, you know, has a compromised immune system. Okay, you make the best decision for you and your family. And they have a healthy fear. Uh, and, and I think part of what needs to shift is we need to understand not only the, va- the anxieties of those who are vaccine hesitant or right. resistant, but we also need to have a healthy respect for everybody, first of all, but also uh, for the lives and health of everybody else. Because I think people have a right to be protected uh, from the unvaccinated. And we are not really talking about that. That is, that is a serious concern for millions of Americans. Mara Gay there, New York Times. I just sit there and I'm like... You you are looking at it in 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 a, in a one way. I have a right to be protected from you. Well, people who are unvaccinated and feel that they can get through this thing, uh, even if they catch it, they think it's overblown. Or even if you think it's you know, first of all, I have yet to talk to anybody who's unvaccinated who wants to die. I've yet to talk to anybody. Who's unvaccinated? Who's like, you know what? I hope my cat's this thing. No, no. That's stupid. But when you talk like that, and again, New York Times, you're a New York Times writer. You're a journalist. You're, you're talking about essentially 
we, we have a right to be protected from you people. Well, you know what? All those people feel they have a right to be protected when it comes to their choice. When it comes to 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 what they believe to be the truth. And when it comes to what they think is an overreach from the government. You don't see it that way. A lot of people feel like, you know what? You should have no choice in this. And it's funny because the people who want you to have no choice in this want you to have choice when it comes to other things like abortion. And and th- and that's that's the crazy battle that goes on. Welcome to the world of politics. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Check us out across all social media. By the way, Britney Spears, could Pops be in a position to help Britney get out of this mess when it comes to her conservatorship because he's filing to try to end this thing. But the courts are going to have the final say in this. Dan Abrams. It certainly seems that all indicators are that at least the conservatorship over the person, about who makes medical decisions, personal decisions, who she associates with, that one I think is pretty clearly going to end. Okay, but when? There is a hearing at the end of the month. It could happen as soon as then. So I'd say at the soonest, it would be a few weeks, um, but it could certainly extend beyond that. So the courts will have the final say. So just because her dad says he want to do it anymore doesn't mean that she is going to get her wish. Or in reality, it doesn't mean that uh, the people that want this, which is, I think, a lot more. I think there's a lot of people out there that want this maybe more than she does at times. We really want this for you, Brittany, because we think you should be free. It's like a cult. But they're going to have the final say. The court will. What if the court comes back and says, no. (laughs) What? No. You know, we've looked at a lot of stuff, and we're privy to a lot more things than you guys are out there. And we're thinking no at this moment in time. Now, we're going to give you somebody that's going to be the new full-time conservator. But no. What if that happened? I don't think it will, but what if that did happen? Oh, wow. That'd be weird. It's possible. Anything's possible. I think we know that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. My pillow. My pillow. Uh, it's great deals. Great deals, kids. Pillow of my pillows. Got great deals. Including uh, the Geese of Dream Sheets right now. Go to MyPillow.com. Uh, use the promo code Benson. Save you big right there. Normally, they're about a hundy. Uh, you're going to get them 50% off. So under 50 bucks. Six-day money-back guarantee, best sheets around, cotton's called long staple cotton's grown in the dead center of the Mediterranean Sea, Sahara Desert, and the Nile. So it's right there. Super breathable, super comfortable. You're going to love these. You're going to love these things. You're going to love them. I promise you that. And again, six-day money-back guarantee. Different sizes. These are the best sheets you're ever going to own. MyPillow.com. Use that promo code Benson to say big. Check out all the other deep discounts, including the My Slippers, which are back now. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. A little what's trending straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's, what's trending? trending? I was just talking to Valen, who is in for Phil over the next couple of days. Phil's got some much needed time off. He's going to say he's going to go eat all kinds of snacks. So producer Phil and Anthony are all this week. And it's just just played old me, kids, back. But uh, uh, she's like, how do you have so much energy? You get up so early. And I'm like, I just, that's who I am. Bouncy cat. I'm like Tigger. Tigger's a wonderful thing. Let's go over to uh, Google, find out what's trending there. John Mulaney is going to be a Pops. Olivia Munn and him confirm that uh, they are expecting a child. Uh, uh, so sometime between rehab and 
because he was in rehab for a while. You know, comics, you find that a lot in comics. Let's be real. Comics, you know, a uh, lot of tragedy in, in, in comedians. Very rarely do you find a comedian that's like, man, my life's great. It's always been great. Uh, Bitcoin struggles, stabilized after a flash crash yesterday. Of course, El Salvador becoming the first nation to essentially embrace it, it, it. Uh, Mexico at Earthquake 7.0, Monica Lewinsky uh, on Lethal Charm. She's uh, She says she doesn't want a, uh, an apology anymore. Kylie Jenner's pregnant with uh, her second child. And uh, the Moo variant, Moo, is trending. The Moo variant is trending. Matrix 4 also. I saw a bit of it yesterday. The, uh, they have a... Uh, uh, like a teaser trailer, and I think the trailer comes out Thursday or Friday. All right, so uh, let's head over to the magical world of Twitter and find out who's angry over there, uh, which is always somebody. Obviously, COVID-19, John Mulaney trending as well. Canada aims to permanently block Chelsea Manning from entering the country. Is it because Chelsea Manning, and if those of you guys don't remember Chelsea Manning, uh, who was part of the entire chaos and craziness that went on with the spying and the NSA and, you know, all of this, this, this lunacy back in the day with WikiLeaks and she was the private uh, that provided so much of that information to people outside of there to talk about hey look at all the stuff that's going on here uh but apparently they don't want her there uh and you know it's 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 weird right because you're a hero to some who are like i knew our government spied but then at the same time it's like why are you giving away our secrets it's like a weird kind of world that we live in where you're angry in some cases and at the same time you're like hey thanks for letting us know don't ever do that again Oh, yeah, that is kind of odd. Oh, totally it is. It totally is. And then golf, men's golf. Ryder Cup. That will start next next week. I think it's next week. So Ryder Cup is next week. If you don't know what the Ryder Cup is, it is arguably the fun, the, the, the bestest time, if you will, using proper English, the, the most bestest enjoyable time of golf. Uh, because it is, it's America versus the Europeans. And it's like a, this past weekend, the women played. There was the Solheim Cup. And you, it's, you'll hear stuff that you're not going to hear on a golf course. And I'm not talking about bad languages. I'm just cheering while guys are swinging. USA, the chance. It's, it's a team competition. And the captain's picks were made today. Uh, so, uh, very interesting to see what's going, uh, on there. But, uh, we're talking about no Patrick Reed. Captain America was not uh, was not there, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And if you've never if you never watch golf, here's the beauty of golf: it's not very political. <laughs> and the second thing is, uh, if you're going to watch one thing in golf, you know people talk about the Masters. You watch this; it's fun. It is the chanting. Guys kind of talk trash in ways that you don't really. Th- it's USA. It is a spirit. It is. It's like something you don't see in golf. I mean, if they could, they'd probably tackle each other. Although they're golfers, so it probably wouldn't go well. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Talk a little climate change. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Look, up in the air. Is it a bird? It's a plane. No, it's somebody who's insane on a plane. We've heard of unruly passengers before, but how about one who growled? 
As an American Airlines traveler on a flight from L.A. to Salt Lake City caught on video standing up. Sit down now. And growling like a dog at crew members while removing and replacing his mask. Ah. Witnesses say the 61-year-old man from Vegas was yelling, God bless America, and Joe Biden, they also say he verbally targeted an Asian woman. He was arrested at the gate cited for public intoxication and disorderly conduct. What? Disorderly conduct? (laughs) Oh, God. It's insane. It is. I just, uh, the whole thing is is like somewhere along the line over the last 16 months, we have lost our, any form of etiquette towards one another, especially when we get on an airplane. It's like, hey, normally I'm a good guy. Normally, uh, my wife's nice, or my my husband's good, or my kids. Are, but then they get on an airplane, and it's all of a sudden it's all, ah! and people lose their mind. <laughs> and I'm thinking, is it is it the restrictions? You know, is it people have been pent up? What is it that is that? Uh, what was it always like this, and we just didn't know about it? So I talked to a couple, uh, uh, whatever, whatever they're called there, flight attendants now. I don't, I don't even know what to call anybody anymore. I'm like, what's politically correct so I don't get in trouble? And they said, you know, it's worse. It, there was always an issue here or there, right? Because you're gonna, you know, you're flying with a bunch of people who are in a tube. Uh, going somewhere. Some of them are excited. Some of them are miserable. Everybody's stressed because, you know, you're running from here to there. So, and then some of them were overserved. So you expect some of that. But a lot of this now isn't overserved, although this one rawr, was. Let's hear some of that rawr again. <laughs> but in saying that, this is what they did say is. It's the reaction of people now, and that's the tension of it. The reaction uh, of of people where before maybe they would argue or, or whatever. Now it has become personal and it's become vile. And, it, and I'm like, well, you know, that's... It's unfortunate, but welcome to the world now of, of, of people who are, feel they're entitled to to be a-holes all the time. Not just on the internet. All the time. And that is frustrating. <sighs> three, two, three. <sighs> Fuck three, eight, 24, 23. Tweet, text at me. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. So I found this. I Look, for me, I'm always interested in, in, in growing and learning about stuff. And and I found this to be interesting. Uh, I like a lot of what John Stossel does. Uh, the reason is, is because I feel he's an honest, he do, he's an honest purveyor of stuff. He's more interested in the truth and facts than he is, uh, you know, causing hell. And uh, where, you know, like even yesterday, this is, yesterday I was flipping through Instagram for whatever reason. I'm like, oh, I just want to be miserable. So let's flip through Instagram. And I'm flipping through it. And MSNBC posted something about All the horrible things Trump had done to destroy the media and to turn people against the media and stuff. And I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. But the way they made it sound, it was like everything was great with the media before. And then Trump came along and all became miserable. And interesting enough, I went to look at the comments. And the comments made me laugh because there was a lot of people like, look, I don't like Trump at all, but nobody believes anything that you guys say, and they haven't for years. And you're you're the media. You're not journalist. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's true. Like, that's kind of what you are. Your, your opinions now, right? You, you have 55 minutes of news, of which 53 minutes is your opinion about a story. Ooh. And that's because we've changed. In this day and age now, it's about likes, it's about shares, it's about views. You're not going to get that with the who, what, when, how, and why. You've got to have salaciousness around it, otherwise it doesn't work. 
And one of the things that's gone on and continues to do so is the fact that we have now got a culture, uh, 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 this 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 insane culture of everybody's a victim. And race is the perfect place to do it. Let me tell you something about race and racism. Does racism exist? Yes. Is it as bad as the people on the left want to make you think it is? No. And I think most people realize that if they were honest with themselves. But we can always do better. We should always be striving to do better. But to think you're going to completely eliminate it is is a fool. That's a, that's a fool's errand. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. But one thing's for sure, there's money in them there, victims. You, you out there, are you a racist? I think you're racist. All white people are, says Robin D'Angelo. In the white mind, black people are the ultimate racial other. And Ibram Kendi says... Every person, every idea, and every policy is either racist or anti-racist. Both best-selling authors reach lots of people. No justice, no peace! It sounds good to educate people about racism. Absolutely. And we should 110% do that on every chance we have it to. About racism. And of course, I mean, that, that's like we shouldn't even have to. That, that's the dumbest thing. Should we? Yes, of course we should. But there's ways of going about doing it. And some of the insanity that's out there is exactly that. And one of those things is it's like when we talk about voter ID, right? The way that the left makes it out is, well, you know, you know black people can't get an ID. What? Like that, that to me is, huh? What? Like how ridiculous is that? But that's the way they make it sound, right? Like, oh, you know, you know, they don't know how to get an ID. It's like, you know, well, the, uh, they, they, they can't get on the internet. Well, why can't they do that? Cause, and if you talk to him, it's like, well, the DMV is right. Or, you know, Ari Horowitz, right? He's down in New York and he's, he's going through it. He's talking to all this black people. He's like, do you know where the DMV is? They're like, it's across the street. And you have an ID? He goes, yeah, why do I have an ID? And he keeps asking people of color this and they're like, it's up the street. Of course they, but they make it seem that way, right? Because it's, it's about purveying people as victims. Cause there's huge money in victims. Right, Both sides do it. Let's not pretend that the right doesn't have their opportunity to do it. Both sides do it. But some of it does it better than others. The way we're being encouraged to think hurts black people. John McWhorter, author of Woke Racism, says this new approach to race is not scholarly. It's toxic, like a cult. We ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters. I've been amazed. I have lived during a time when I could watch a religion form. The heartbeat of anti-racism is confession. A new religion has arisen, and more to the point, that it's religion. <laughs> it is. It is a blank religion. And that's what it is. Do you remember when the George Floyd thing went down, and all those white people are out there, and they're begging for forgiveness, and they're on their hands and knees, and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell are you doing? Like, what in God's name are you doing? How is this, what? And there are people out there, and and that's, you know, it's like we talked about a couple weeks ago, people are just randomly Venmoing people of color money, white people. Who's that for? How insulting is that? That that to me, I find it to be insane. And you got a a, a black guy, a professor, right? Like this guy is is he's he's not an idiot. He's a smart cat. Like a cult. We ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters. See that? Listen to that. Oh my God! I've been amazed. I have lived during a time when I could watch a religion form. And that's what it feels like. It feels like a religion, but a cultish religion. This is a clearly fact-based belief. There is racism. Oh, there certainly is. But he says the problem with these messages is that they claim racism explains just about everything. White Americans have more because of racism. And racism is why on tests... Black people receive lower scores than, than whites and Asians. In the past, civil rights leaders said... Well, how can we make it so that black kids are better at the test? Yeah, do you remember that? A couple weeks ago, we talked about Oregon. What are they doing? They're getting rid of testing because they think it disproportionately hurts black children. How does that help black children? By eliminating certain things or grades to pass people. That, that, that doesn't. In fact, what you're doing is you're setting them up for failure down the road. 
it used to be, what is the problem? The problem is this. Many of these kids have been disadvantaged. Absolutely. They're in school districts that are poor, 100%. They've been set up in some cases because a system that was quote-unquote supposed to help them has done more to hurt them. How do we get from point A to point B where we, instead of saying, let's just get rid of everything and we'll just try to make it even that way, bring people up? We can't now because everything is racist. Everything is racist. Today's idea is eliminate the test. These tests, which are denying access. You take away the tests in order to show that you are not a racist because the tests have a way of making black people unhappy. That it is somehow unreasonable to expect black kids to use analytical thinking in a rigorous way. This is a new way of thinking. It's a religious way of thinking. It's awful. And it doesn't help. Thomas Sowell is one of the great minds of our, our generation. Uh, talked about the fact that, you know, you go and look at some of the things that they do where they, where they decide, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to allow this kid to get into MIT and he, he's black and he could go to the Chicago Institute of Technology or somewhere else or, or, uh, and he would fare great, but you put him in a position where he doesn't succeed. And instead of raising him up, he gets frustrated and it, and it hurts him. Thomas Sowell's black. These kind of things are ridiculous. This doesn't help anybody. How do we find a solution? It goes back to the thing I always talk about, right? People are interested in winning arguments. They're interested in virtue signaling. They're not interested in reality of things. Today, they took down the, was it a Robert E. Lee statue, right? They've debated this for years, and it's been court, and all, so they took it down, and people are cheering. Did it solve anything? Did somebody get a better grade? Did somebody get tutoring? Did somebody get an opportunity? No. It made people feel good. And I'm sure somebody raised money off of it. But did it solve anything? Was a problem solved because of it? Or does it make people feel good? We live in a world now where feelings override fact. And that is not good. And victims... Equal dollar signs for a lot of people. And that's a sad situation that we, should, we shouldn't be in. But when you look at somebody and you say, hey, you know what? We're going to get rid of this test because uh, we don't think it's, it's fair. And uh, because what you're really saying is we don't think you're smart enough for this. We don't think you're bright enough for this. And uh, uh, because of that, we're going to eliminate this so it makes everybody else you know, feel better. Do you feel better about that? No. No. Wouldn't want that. Can't have conversations in this country anymore because people are terrified to have conversations. People are terrified to 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 sit down and do the hard work and stuff and to find out what is the solution here to this problem because it might not be something that makes people feel good and in a day and age where it matters more about what you look like on the internet how virtuous you are it ends up being an ass kicker in real life because we're not setting people up for success we're pushing them towards failure and that's not good three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson shows your twitter tweet at us text the program china is going in one direction We're going in another direction. We will discuss it straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. You stink like fear and white male privilege to me. I do often out myself verbally as a gender. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm proud to be a gender. Are you so bitch? <laughs> Ruben! What? Are you kidding me? Not a great way to use your white privilege. Some people get it. Some people don't. You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. <gasps> so, China. China has essentially told their advertisers if you're going to be putting people who are male in advertising and on television, they must 
present and purvey a sense of masculinity and manliness. Oh, my God. They must do that. What? That's what they must do. So they don't want feminine men. They don't want, it, you, you have to have. Why is that? Because China is, is a culture of strength. Right? I keep saying this. China's in it for the long haul. China's in it to win it. Are we in it to win? It's a very fair question in this day and age. Are we in it to win this thing? China wants to win. Period. Case closed. For us, we battle over pronouns. We battle over words. Case in point, this. So I don't know if this is considered an unpopular opinion, but if you have a daughter, you need to stop calling her princess. I have a three-year-old, and she's my princess. If you do. The way that Disney has branded the princess is based on her beauty as her most important asset. This term also encourages the damsel in distress that needs to be rescued. Is that what it is? Well, they're fairy tales, and many of them from the 1700s, right? So, and Disney went with it, all right? That's, that's, let's just settle down. What father doesn't call their little girl sometimes princess or, or, I mean, come on. Well, not anymore. And it doesn't focus on their intelligence or integrity or any other character trait. Yeah, so, it's the new Disney show. Like, what, what? Could you imagine this new? Oh, check out the new Disney show, right? What is it? It's uh, she she reads books all day. <laughs> oh, that's 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 gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. What's the guy do? He's uh, he's a super. Uh, he's an ally feminist. Oh man, I can't wait to watch that. What should we call them? By them, I mean they. By they, I mean whatever people are supposed to say. Why don't we call girls? scientist engineer doctor like why does it have to be something cutesy like oh princess what do you need like no (laughs) guys uh when you hear this one i think this will say everything you need to know my daughter's father called her princess yesterday and i had to lecture him again oh fantastic so you're lecturing me about what i call my daughter when i call her princess you're lecturing me. Are you, are you, why are you guys not together? Because we do not use that term in this house. Even my own sisters have called her princess and I will tell them don't. 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 Don't call her that. Maybe I come across as very controlling, but I think it's a very harmful word and she shouldn't look up to that term. <laughs> How are you single? <laughs> I joke. Look, girls, you can be anything that you want in life. Zero. I tell my daughter that all the time. Do anything you want. Be anything you want. You're still always going to be daddy's princess. Period. Case closed. End of story. All right? Now go be an engineer. Go be a doctor. And you'll be daddy's princess. Just like mommy's queen. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The U.S. is seeing nearly four times the number of infections and double the number of COVID hospitalizations compared to one year ago when there was no vaccine. ICUs in several states are overwhelmed with unvaccinated patients. In Idaho, which has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country, hospitals are beginning to ration care. The state's health department calling it a last resort, adding it means we've exhausted our resources to the point that our health care systems are unable to provide the treatment and care we expect. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, but what are you going to do? This is a, a guy named Brad uh, Bridgeford. He is a guy in Idaho, physician assistant, 
you know, or, or nurse practitioner, essentially just under a doctor, uh, works closely with doctors, but in many cases, far more closely with patients. And talking about, you know, frustrations. Uh, and, you know, when you, when you go, first of all, what do you have to do? We need to figure out some way to, to speak to these people on a larger scale because our vaccine rates in Idaho are so low that we're never going to achieve any type of normalcy with the way things are going. Well, you will because eventually everybody's going to catch it and you're going to have the, you know, people that are alive and survive, which will be the majority of the people. And uh, at some point, you're going to get to a point where you've got so many people teaming with antibodies because everybody's had it. I mean, their vaccination rates are so low. But what is it all about? I can throw as many stats and scientific facts at them, but if I never address their fears, then I'll never get them to agree. And fear is a big thing. So Mara Gay the uh, esteemed uh, writer for the New York Times said this. Uh, a majority of Americans uh, do actually fear this virus and understand the science. They respect it. They fear the virus. Some people fear the vaccine. Isn't it kind of the same thing, right? Like They fear what their government may be forcing upon them. They fear that their government is lying to them. And somehow your fear of the virus overrides their fear. Like your fear is more important. I always go back to like the hate thing. And it's like people look at somebody, right? You, you know, people, oh, like, you know, the Republicans are full of hate and I hate them. And I'm like, well, what? Somehow that your, your hate is morally superior to their hate like your fear of something is morally superior to their fears and i'm not an anti-vaxxer i'm a vaxxer i went and got vaccinated and i've had the thing and you know the beauty of that can i just say this and what they're saying you know you take it for a grain of salt anymore and whether or not you believe anything anybody says having prior infection to covid is incredibly valuable in terms of delta it's actually the combination that we're finding is vaccination plus prior infection does show that you are you know essentially bulletproof bullet proof now i've had it <laughs> and i've had the vaccine so is that the reason i'm bulletproof no i don't I, just, I again i don't i don't know what to believe a lot of times when it comes to the virus and what they think works and doesn't work 100 percent because it's not a vaccine Right. So the shot's not a vaccine the way that we would think of you. You would think of a, a vaccine as as a kid, you get it. You know, you're going to get a vaccine for the measles, the mumps, the rubella, you know, uh, polio. And you're like, OK, I get one shot and I'm kind of done. And, you know, maybe maybe you go and you get a, you know, a tetanus shot once every 10 years or oh, I'm done. Yeah, that's what we think of. Right. Like a vaccine. It's like a one and done. This is kind of the flu shot. And you change the you change the perception of it. This isn't a this isn't a a a a one and done thing. It's going to be maybe it's at least for now it might be you get two shots now and then one uh you know you get three shots a year. Maybe they learn you know and then next year it may be uh they'll figure out a way where you get one shot and they'll combine it with a flu shot or something like, whatever it is. But the flu shot is not 100%. People are like, "Oh my god, look at all the breakthrough cases." First of all, they're not a ton. Like here they were talking, I think we have 18,000 breakthrough cases in Arizona. We've had four and a half million people or so. 4.25 million people that are vaccinated. So what is that? It's it's like 0.004% of breakthrough cases of the new. So that's nothing. But you focus on things like that. That's why the vaccine doesn't work. It's not a vaccine. You know, the flu shot is a good years. It's 60% effective on bad years. It's 40%. Essentially what it is, is a preventative shot that will help fight the flu if and when you get it. It'll do pretty good at keeping it away from you and should you catch it it'll mitigate any of the damps same kind of thing with this right same kind of thing with this so right now i have two friends 
who have had breakthrough. We were talking about this on the air. My my on-air partner for my afternoon show, he was supposed to be in Jamaica, man, crazy, this week. Him and his wife, they were going there for her sister's 50th birthday. Uh, he texted me last week, uh, his wife, who I golf with, she's got it. Now, I haven't seen her in a couple weeks, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. I'm like, Lynette, how you doing? She's like, I'm fine. And just, I'm fine. Uh, uh, but he's, if you guys, and you've heard me talk about him, he is a hypochondriac. He's not a germaphobe. He's a hypochondriac. But with this thing, he's kind of become a germaphobe. So they're in separate parts of the house. And, and you know, uh, now we find out that my our, our news person, a news lady, uh, Becky, she texted me a little while ago. She's got it. She's got back from a trip. But she feels fine. She feels fine. She's, she's got a little sore and aches. And, you know, that's about it. She goes, doesn't she goes nowhere near the flu. And that's what we, you look and you say the numbers right there. To me, that's the number side of thing. It's about the numbers. And the numbers say this. But for some people, it doesn't matter. Because they have a distrust. And inherently, as Americans, we're distrustful. Right? And if you don't believe that, read our Constitution. <laughs> our Constitution is essentially a bunch of rules that say, look, the government's probably not to be believed. <laughs> And at any given time, we need to have something in place that you guys can use to rise up against them. They could try to take away your speech, so we're going to guard that. we got to give you guys something to protect yourself from them, just in case the first one doesn't work, so we're going to have the Second Amendment. <laughs> you see, we're, you know, we're going to have something there for search and seizure that's unlawful. You start breaking it down, you're like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's essentially a letter to, to America of, hey, don't trust the people in power. So inherently, we're kind of that way. We're skepticals. So it's understandable why some people would look at the government and say, I'm not quite sure I, I believe you. I'm not quite sure. I don't get what your angle is. Oh. But we discount somebody else's belief in this day and age, and we poo-poo it, and we say, well, because you don't believe the way that I do, because you don't think the way that I do, that you are... You're stupid, you're ignorant, you're a denier. Now, there are some people out there that are ridiculous. We all know that, and that's on both sides, right? There are people out there who, who you know, they roll up their windows, they wear two masks in the car, nobody's around them, they're double, double vaccinated, they live by themselves, and they rarely leave their house. And then you've got other people out there that, you know, think this thing's a joke and it's not real, and if you get the, th- the shot, it's got a microchip in you, and you're going to become magnetic, and the government's going to follow you everywhere, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, those, I, I'm taking those people out of the equation. Because they don't live in a real world. It's the other people. The new, the new word of the day is, is so for those of you guys, schadenfreude, which is, uh, it's a German word, essentially it means... I kind of, you know, I I, I kind of like it when, uh, when uh, you know, bad things happen to some people. I kind of take joy out of other people's misfortune. That's John Freud. Vaccine Freud is people out there who kind of take pleasure and joy in watching people who aren't vaccinated kind of, they feel, get their comeuppance. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can't tell me that that doesn't happen. Because of course it does. Because you'll hear things like, well, you'll find out. You'll find out. You'll find out. Oh, where do you get it? And I'm like, wow. So it's very interesting when you hear people talk about certain things. But it goes back to both people have their beliefs. We should respect it, understand that they have their fears. Try to figure out what your fear is. Well, my fear is this virus is the most deadly thing in the world. You should be terrified of it. No, you shouldn't. You should respect what it is and and go from there. But if you live your life based completely on the fear of this thing, you are going to uh, paralysis by analysis. It's not going to happen. What's your fear over here? My fear is that this virus is 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 not real and that the government's trying to control you and they're going to give you a shot and all these and it's settled down. And, and you walk through it and that this this is fake pseudoscience and blah. But we can't do that if we go and attack each other. Because the reality is, all that being said, people 
are more interested in winning an argument than solving a problem in this day and age. That doesn't move us forward. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Britney's free. We'll touch on that. Oh, Britney. Brit, Brit, Afghanistan, kids. Touch on that as well. Raycon, best earbuds around. Get your break, kids. Get your break, kids. The best earbuds. 45-day happiness guarantee. Start under 70 bucks. Premium earbuds. The best sound quality. The best noise isolating fit you're going to find. You won't find anything anywhere close to this for the money. No stems, no wires, just awesome. Get your earbuds now. The Raycons. Pick your colors, right? Like I've got red ones. Jack wanted those. Took them. I've got black ones. Those are pretty fly. Blue ones. Those are cool. Although Jack took one of those and I can't find it. That's welcome to the world of having an 11-year-old who thinks everything's his. They are amazing. You will love these. Get your Raycons now. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. 45-day happiness guarantee. One-year warranty. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. 49% sees the U.S. as safer from terrorism than it was before 9-11. That's down from 64% a decade ago and among the weakest ratings of U.S. anti-terrorism efforts in any ABC News, Washington Post polls, all likely reflecting the partisan divide in the country and the tumultuous withdrawal of American forces from Afghanistan. Yeah, you think, by the way, the Taliban, guess what? You guys excited? I bet, look, what do you think happened with the Taliban? Just, just out of curiosity. Do you think they, uh, they had free and fair elections? Let's, let's find out. They're all members of the Taliban, and it certainly does not include any women, but it does include people with ties to terrorism. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me there's no women? I, Martha, I didn't hear that. But it does include people with ties to terrorism. So we've got terrorism? So we, we, we've got that. But, but, but what about the women? Ban, and it certainly does not include any women. So no women, ties to terrorism. I just can't believe that. Including the new minister of the interior. Who sounds like a good guy. Who has a $5 million FBI price tag on his head for his affiliation with terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda. Wow. <sighs> Nightmare. Nightmare. And, uh... Let's find out if they're going to care about the rights of human beings. In their first official statement, the newly appointed leaders say they will take steps to protect human rights. But they have already disbanded the Ministry of Women's Affairs, the lead agency for promoting women's rights. Yeah, they were also told today uh, they are going to rule by Sharia law in doing so. Women are essentially back in the cave, back in the the dungeon, back in a time that I think they thought, well, as long as America's here and we're not there anymore, that this is going to be okay. We're, we, we will have a chance to move forward. No. School, sports, all of that stuff, gone. Gone. You're here to, for them. Your property, your chattel, you're here for reproduction, and that's it. Nothing else. They could say it and spin it however they want to, but I think we all know the reality of this. I think we, I think we do. And we knew what was going to happen. The fact that Biden said, oh, I don't really know what's going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen that fast. Uh, again, goes back to either you're lying or you're incompetent course it was going to happen that fast how could it not happen that fast now we finally admitted eh, you know maybe there was a few americans left there for the first time the secretary of state confirming there are a small number of americans among the group stopped by the taliban they have said that those without valid documents at this point can't leave but because all of these people are grouped together um that's meant 
uh, that uh, flights have not been uh, been allowed to go. Yeah, you think? Now, one woman and her family figured out how to do it. Oklahoma Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen says they traveled 300 miles through 20 Taliban checkpoints at each one, paying 500 to $4,000 per person. To get a Texas mom out of there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's a nightmare, and we'll see what comes of it. And you got to think about this. September 11th is a few days away. Yesterday, uh, I was talking to a police officer uh, who works out here, but he was in New York at the time. I think we're going to have him in on uh, Friday uh, on that day. And it, it's just, he, you know, we were having a discussion, and, and, you know, we'll touch more on it, but frustrated. He's very frustrated. He's very frustrated. And there's a, I, I tweeted something. It's a very interesting article, and we'll touch on it on the other side, about Michael Moore that really poses some interesting questions. And again, this, this is the beauty of my show is I like to have conversations about stuff. And what he posed about Osama bin Laden, I think there is some truth in it. We'll talk about it straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It was 2019 when marching bands last played live as they paraded through New York in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The virus made last year a made-for-TV thing. But this year, Macy's and the city said the parade can step in the streets once again with a nod to the new pandemic reality. There will be fewer participants in the parade and all will be vaccinated and wear masks. Singers and dancers may go without. The performers will be the same ones who were supposed to play, cheer, and sing in 2020. And the giant character balloons are back. But will they be masked? Oh, who knows? We're supposedly way worse off than we were a year ago. And if you look at the numbers, that's hard to, you know, really debate that. You, you can't, right? I mean, the, the reality is, is, is last year, comparatively to this year, uh... Things were better, numbers-wise. The U.S. is seeing nearly four times the number of infections and double the number of COVID hospitalizations compared to one year ago when there was no vaccine. ICUs in several states are overwhelmed with unvaccinated patients. In Idaho, which has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country, hospitals are beginning to ration care. The state's health department calling it a last resort, adding it means we've exhausted our resources to the point that our health care systems are unable to provide the treatment and care we expect. And a lot of what is going on, it's twofold. First thing, first things first. Last year, we didn't know, right? This thing was still new. Stuff was happening where, you know, every day there seemed to be a changing thing of of it's a wave. It's a first wave. It's a second wave. It's going to get better. Is it seasonal? Obviously, we weren't quite sure. We had the election going on, but we, we, we thought there was hope around the corner and the hope was going to be the vaccine and there's going to be some therapeutics along the way. And lo and behold, a year into this, we have seen flip-flops from the World Health Organization to the CDC. We've seen the likes of Fauci come out and go, you should wear a mask, not wear a mask. Didn't wear a mask, wear four masks. Get triple vaccinated, but only take one kind of vaccine. We, we've seen all kinds of stuff. You know what we're doing now? We're, we drowned out the noise, and we're like, oh, we, we got to, maybe Chad was right on this one. We're going to have to learn how to live above this thing. It isn't going anywhere they're not going to stop today and just say well it's the best we're going to do they're going to figure something out down the road for many reasons one because it's their ethical duty no because of money just to let you know there are several billionaires that have been minted in the pharmaceutical world uh to say that they're going to stop now would be foolish 
They're not going to. They're going to find something that makes it easier for us to live with it, much like the flu, and where we don't have to sit there and live our lives based in fear, as so many people apparently, according to the New York Times, is doing. But it is, you know, it's frustrating. But we're we're just learning that like, this thing isn't going anywhere. Right? It's endemic. It's not pandemic. It's, it's here. So we're going to have to learn to live with it. And I think people are accepting that. They're accepting the fact that, well, here it is, and it's not going anywhere, so I guess we're going to learn to live with it. And so, you know what, kids, if they ask you to mask up at this point in time, let's not fight. Let's mask up and get on with our damn lives. Get in there, get out, whatever we're doing. The schools. What about the schools? That's another battle that will continue to go on. Uh, But that's a cultural battle as much as anything else. It goes back to, uh, is it about keeping kids safe? Because if you look at the numbers, kids are catching it easier because the net is bigger. But are they dying as readily? This virus still impacts adults in a more severe way. But the situation is many adults are vaccinated. And this virus, especially the new Delta variant that has emerged rapidly, will find unvaccinated hosts. Yeah, and that's kids. But it's still not uber deadly both of well all of my kids have had it my little one had it. jack had it two stepdaughters had it wouldn't even know wouldn't even have known like jack had it in such a way this was jack dad my stomach kind of hurts oh i got a bit of a headache no oh no do you feel really bad do you think you should you know should we what do you think we should do? I don't know. I think you should go to the doctors. No, I think I'll be okay. Yeah, you should probably not go outside and play hockey today. Oh, no, I'll feel better by the afternoon. I go and play golf by the time I get home. He's outside playing hockey. I feel great, Dad. <laughs> That's still a lot of what's going on. Doesn't mean kids aren't getting sick. Again, the net's wider. And it's going to find kids who've got compromised immune systems and sort of thing. But it's there. But we're fighting the cultural battle with the kids over the mask because to them, to some people, it's that symbol again. We talked about earlier. This is the freedom. You're taking away freedoms. Oh, my freedom. And on the other side of things, it's, it's, oh, let's do this because it's going to make everybody extra safe. Of course, masks work. The right mask works really good. But. The wrong mask really doesn't do anything. It makes people feel good. It's like the TSA, right? We're talking about 9-11. It's coming up. Is TSA, if you ever really think, like, dudes, does anybody go to the airport and think, thank God, because you guys. No, nobody does that. This is what we do when we see the TSA. Crap. These people are awful. It's going to take forever to get through this line. I don't even know what this person's doing. They're going to scribble something on it. You know, and what, what, is it, what is this? What did you write? What does this mean? Nothing. Nothing. Randomly pull some 82-year-old woman in a wheelchair out or a man with a cane and their kids are holding his arm and, uh, you know, they're going to strip search him and you're like, okay. <laughs> it's like, this is the guy they got to. This is the guy they got. This is Al-Qaeda got to. <laughs> they got to this guy. All right, Herb. No, nobody says that. It's just frustrating. For a lot of things, for people mask, a lot of that's what it is. It's a it's that placebo effect. If it doesn't make you feel better, I don't know if it makes you feel better than this. But it's a symbol for a lot of people. And it's frustrating because we're fighting over stupid stuff because that's what we do. We're not interested in solving problems. We're interested in arguing and making a point. And that's frustrating. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Before we went to break, I tweeted this out yesterday. Uh, I found it to be interesting. Look, Michael... Moore is Michael Moore. Super uber lefty. We all know that. But on michaelmoore.com, uh, he wrote an interesting piece uh, about bin Laden. He said, in the end, bin Laden won. He said, I decided to go and meet the Taliban in the spring of 1999. Two years before 9 11, tax. Most of us, including me, didn't know much about the Taliban back then, nor did we want to. A decade earlier, the CIA funded and trained Muslim rebels to kick the Soviets out of Afghanistan. We talked about that. The Mujahideen, they humiliated them. Boom, there's their Vietnam. Uh, he goes, The Taliban landed on his radar, 99. They banned 
kite flying and made it illegal to watch TV. Two of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> but it is a very interesting thing because, again, he, he, he's also got some video on there. And some of the stuff that he talks about in this is, is very much true. About the fact that, look, was he the mastermind behind 9-11? No, he was the symbol of. Much like a lot of things in politics, it's a lot of people behind the scenes that you don't see who are the, are the people that are really pulling uh, the, the, the lever, if you will. I mean, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, you know, KSM, his trial's getting ready to go. A lot of people thought he was the mastermind for all intents and purposes of it. This guy just kind of okayed it, if you will. But in some ways, bin Laden kind of did, you know, I don't say win, but it was definitely more of a push. It was definitely more of of a push when it comes to did he lose? He lost his life. His legacy for many will 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 live on because people over there see him as a hero. People over there, he's a freedom fighter. People over there in in many cases they they revel in who he is because not only take away what we did they look at what he did to to give up what he gave up right for those of you guys who do not know the bin laden corporation it's one of the most powerful uh profitable construction and building companies civil engineering in throughout the parts of africa and the middle east it's huge and he gave up the lap of luxury. He was, you know, he was educated in the West. He was, you know, he had engineering degrees. He had money and wealth and everything. And he goes and he fights against and the Soviets and with the Mujahideen. But he also becomes more radicalized, talks about, you know, the West and what the Americans do. And he called out. He said, look, America, because he wanted his big thing is he wanted to go and say, ah, you know what Saddam Hussein? No, we are going to handle this. What they's doing. We're, this is this is a Muslim thing. This is what we need to be doing. When the West got involved and he said, hey, America's not going anywhere. They're going to set up bases and they're not going anywhere. And then we became the evil that it was. And as he became more radicalized. So, yeah, in some ways, there was a bit of, of him winning. But it was also, for, for us, the win was we set out to do one thing, to crush the Taliban and because they've allowed them to set up shop there, to push that back, but really to allow us to get to the evil that was Al-Qaeda. And we did, and we we took him out. On that night, we, we, we took him out. And then from there, we had no idea what the hell we were doing. And from there, it became more of a occupation and you know start stop and we're not quite sure are we going somewhere should we what do i do something here do i not and that's the issue that it came along the way and then of course our sloppiness in the way that we get out and and it kind of super egg on our face but it is a fair question to ask about bin laden and his legacy because to many he is still a hero right to many he is absolutely still a hero. To the West, he is evil. But to a lot of people over there, they still look up to him in a lot of ways. Because they look at like, you took on the evil West and look what you did. Look how you did it. You brought down a symbol of capitalism and Western culture. And for that, he is viewed as a hero. We always say, man, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. We had a great comeback after 9-11 of what we set out to do. And by the way, if you guys haven't really studied any uh, of stuff like this, and you know, I mean, I was... 30 years old uh you go and see how fast we struck with the ferocity of which we struck and and 
how fast the Taliban crumbled and stuff. But like a lot of things, once we get to a certain area, we we didn't have an end game, and that's what caused the hell that it became. And then the symbol of chasing him and finally getting him. And that was a great win and a feather and a cap, absolutely. But along the way, some of what he said became true, and he's still a symbol for a lot of people over there. Because for some situation, it goes back to even the things I talk about here, is there is a culture of that we have right now. And so much of the clashes we have is it's a clash. It's a civil war of culture more than it is a civil war of violence over there. It's a civil war of violence, but also culture. And it's hard to change a culture. They have to change. You can't come in and change a culture. You can give them some tools and hopefully along the way, they find a way if they want to change. But as we found out with the Taliban, (laughs) no, no, they they were fine as far as they were concerned the way they are and other people who may not have liked it didn't have the veracity the means in some cases or the want to change 323-538-2423 at chad benson shows your twitter tweet at us text the program wrap it up straight ahead chad benson show If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. A surprise legal victory for Britney Spears. Her father now asking a Los Angeles court to end the pop star's 13-year conservatorship. In a petition filed Tuesday, lawyers for Jamie Spears saying, quote, if Miss Spears wants to terminate the conservatorship and believes that she can handle her own life, Mr. Spears believes she should get that chance. Yep, that's right. So Spears, over. Britney, get her life back, maybe, kind of, sort of, Dan Abrams. It certainly seems that all indicators are that at least the conservatorship over the person, about who makes medical decisions, personal decisions, who she associates with, that one, I think, is pretty clearly going to end. Yeah. But will the whole thing end? Because it is not just him going, look, all right, I'm done with this. There is more to it, meaning the court. And the court may say, no. There is a hearing at the end of the month. It could happen as soon as then. So I'd say at the soonest, it would be a few weeks. Um, But it could certainly extend beyond that. Yeah. So we'll see. But the the America's long nightmare is is finally over. Uh, She's going to be free. She's going to be free. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Yesterday Biden was out there and he was, you know, he's got his 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 you know his big little speech and stuff today and his you know six prong attack on COVID and then he's been taking on Ida and the damage left in the wake and of course climate change. President Biden called this an eye opener, saying climate change is everybody's crisis and he's doubling down on his push for Congress to pass his massive infrastructure package, not only to help rebuild now but to be better prepared for extreme weather threats in the future. And I go back to when you go and look at hurricanes, they're not more plentiful than before. They're not more powerful. We've moved to places where, you know, 150 years ago, people didn't live there. (laughs) So it didn't matter, right? Like it, it, it didn't. And I'm not saying climate change doesn't exist. Don't don't put me in that. I'm just saying there's a lot of factors that go into stuff. Right. So if you put yourself right, if you move from from, you know, Tennessee or, or you know, you move from Texas or, you know, wherever. Right. Iowa. And you move to California and you have a massive earthquake. You're like, well, we didn't have this, but we well, didn't live here now. You live there. So you're in the path of something that normally people weren't. You want to stop the damage and the billions and the numbers that we see? And tell people that we're, you're on your own. If your house blows down, you're on your own. You watch what happens. People will change their mind about building in certain areas or how they build. 
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Have a good one. We got you over a hump in the short week. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.